Hi, I'm Dave the RPA Guy, and welcome to another episode of Let's Build. In part two here of our Let's Build Monitor a Value series, we'll be going over uh, setting up the application model for the four elements that we're going to need to interact with Facebook, at least during this first iteration that we're making. Let me first show you the website we're going to work with. We're going to start by using Dave the RPA guy's Facebook page, which didn't exist until about five minutes ago when I created it. Oh, well, I guess you can see 35 minutes ago is when I created it. We are going to go to the about page and we're going to watch the mission statement. Now, this mission statement, it just says mission statement here for now. But what we want to do, let's just say we have a reason for this. Maybe, uh, maybe Dave, the RPA guy, I'm interested in this guy, but I'm not really convinced that he's going to stick it out for the long haul until it says something different than mission statement here. I'm just not even going to worry about it. So I'm not going to go back to his web page until that changes. So I'm going to build a simple process automation to watch that, those, that series of words. I just want to watch this and I want the, the bot to email me whenever that changes. Eventually we want it to work for any website, but right now it will only work for Facebook and that's on purpose. So let's go in object studio. We're going to create an object else. Let's just go ahead and call it Facebook. Um, Facebook, we'll call it Facebook for now and then interact with Facebook. Okay. We've got our object. Let's go into it and start making our application model. Okay. Here's the thing. I think that this screen might not be easy enough to see. So <clears throat> please let me know in the comments as soon as possible. If you can't read the text on this screen, if you can't, then what I'll start doing is zooming in the video. But for now I'm going to leave it zoomed out. I'm, I'm doing this in 1920 by 1080. And if you're using a, an, an average size screen, you should be able to read it screen just as well as you could if you were actually working in blue prism. So we'll try that to begin with. Just let me know if that's not going to work out and I'll, I'll try to adjust. All right. The first thing we're going to want to do is create an application model around Facebook. So we're going to define a new application model. We're going to leave the name the same as our object name. And then um, we're going to choose browser based application because all of the well websites that we're going to be working with are all web based. So browser based, we're going to launch from executable. And this is probably where my uh, Internet Explorer executable is located. This is not eventually where we'll leave it, but this will be fine for now. This way from inside of application modeler, we can launch and we can just leave all this stuff the same. Okay. Now we have our, the top level of our application model. Okay. Uh, well, it's saying that we're not launched, so we'll just go ahead and launch. Hopefully this doesn't get in the way of our automation now and then Facebook is going to pop up because I'm I'm not logged in with an account right now all right so thinking about this for a minute I've decided that rather than build out all of the Facebook website because we're gonna be not using an application model for Facebook specifically eventually what we'll do is we'll just create the most basic navigation to the page we want so I don't actually need to verify anything except that you know that I'm actually on the web page I intend to be on so maybe I'll maybe I'll take an input parameter of the profile name or something to begin with to verify the the profile name and that we're on the page that it's loaded before I go and click about and then I can verify that about is loaded before I check the value that it's in about over here okay so we're gonna come to home first so let's let's um, let's do profile name. Is that a profile name? I'm not familiar with Facebook. That's fine. Let's see. Hmm. 
Okay, we're going to go ahead and just deselect any uh, any of the the attributes in Application Modeler that are empty. You're going to want to uh, deselect them because they're not going to be useful. There may be situations where one is empty, and sometimes it will not be empty anymore. For example, the value associated with a with an input field when you first buy it, it might <clears throat> might not have a value, but uh, most of these we we probably aren't going to want. Uh, now we need to decide how we're going to identify this. We're going to leave the HTML path in here just to point it out, or the DOM path. We don't necessarily need it because we can uniquely identify this with this value, but I'm checking on this value. I want to know, does this equal um, Dave the RPA guy? And we're going to say, we're going to leave it like this for now. Okay, let's make sure that it can find it. Okay. We can find that. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to save my object. Periodic save. This is, you can name it whatever you want, but I like to be descriptive. So, spied um, Facebook profile name. And that way, if Blue Prism crashes because I do something silly, it, it won't, it won't, I won't lose everything uh, in case, you know, the, the auto save hasn't happened recently enough. All right, now let's do another element. The other element we're going to want is the about button. And for all of you who are sitting there thinking, well, why is he clicking on the button instead of just navigating straight to the page? Remember, the point of this is to use Blue Prism's functionality and to primarily accomplish this through UI based automation. I'm fully aware we, we might not even need to go to this website or most websites. Maybe, um, you know, maybe we could just request the HTML of the page and then, and then sift through it for the information we want. That's totally fine. Maybe we'll switch to that if it's more reliable. But to begin with, I want, to, I want us to practice uh, going to it through the user interface. I don't think we need class name. Span, I don't think we need that either. All right. Now we can click on the About button. And we're going to go back and change this, actually. I realized I should probably name these by element type. We'll treat it as text for now. OK, now what do we need to do? Um, since this is a dynamic website, I won't create a tree structure in here like I would normally so let's go to about <clears throat> and then uh, we're going to spy the mission field. It's interesting that I can do the whole thing though. And again, deselect all of the empty values. And then some of the others that I just offhand think are unusual, unuseful. Uh, the reason I'm leaving HTML path there is because it's much faster to have Blue Prism identify something based upon its um, document object model path, its DOM path. Okay. Highlight. Found it really fast, right? Now let's just test see how different it is. If I have it try to find simply something that has the value of mission on this page, and there should be only one thing. It has to equal, it's not like if there's a star on each side, it has to equal. Oh man, point proven, am I right? Now let's change it back to identifying based upon the HTML path. Look how fast that is. It's because it doesn't have to search the entire page, it can go down through the, the, the tree structure, um, or the, the structure of this page to go directly down to this place and identify. Uh, let's actually ch check this though because we want it to ta to throw an error if, if it turns out that what it finds in this place is not mission. Okay, so if it said something else there, we would know. All right, let's, uh, I'm not worried about Blue Prism crashing so I'm not gonna keep saving. Okay, let's go, oh right, we should name it uh, text mission and again this this will all be dynamic eventually but now we want the text mission 
we'll call it mission value because it's the value of the mission. All right. Deselect the empty values. Eventually I'll stop saying that because it'll be obvious. Highlight looks good. Looking great. We do want to we don't want to select the value here. Just want to point this out. We don't want to select this because though it'll work right now. Well, let's go change it actually. So uh, what we can do to test this just to so I can show you that this won't work if I change this value here. This this uh, identifying this entire element won't work anymore if I have the mission statement or the, excuse me this text mission value field checked. Let me uh, bring it to the top here. Okay, so I just want to point out it works now. All right, but if I go change it to, uh, I'll just change one letter. Mission statement here, one. Okay, I've changed it, now we'll reload the page. All right, so you can see it says mission statement here, one. This won't work. Highlighting results. No elements matched the supplied query terms. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change it back to mission statement here for consistency. We'll reload the page. And let's change this to not use this value to identify it. All right, uh, I think we have everything we need. In part two here of monitor a value, we set up four elements in Application Modeler that we need to interact with Facebook. In the next video that we'll have, part three of Monitor a Value, we will be building two actions in our object to interact with Facebook. Uh, one is navigate to about, and the other is get a mission value. All right, thanks for making it to this part of my video with me. Uh, I encourage you to like, leave a comment, and also subscribe, and you have yourself a great day. I'll see you in the next video.